Hello friends, this video on inverse trigonometric functions part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 10. Now let's understand some properties of the inverse trigonometric function. The first property says sine inverse 1 by x is equal to cosec inverse x. The second say cos inverse 1 by x is sec inverse x and third says tan inverse 1 by x is cot inverse x. It's very easy to remember this. You know that sine is, is equal to 1 by cosec or 1 by sine is equal to sec. So you can say that sine inverse 1 by x is equal to cosec inverse x. Similarly 1 by cos is equal to sec. So you can say that cos inverse 1 by x is equal to sec inverse x and also 1 by tan is equal to cot, so you can say that tan inverse 1 by x is equal to cot inverse x. Also, please note that since this is cosec inverse x, so you have the range of x to be greater than or equal to 1 or less than or equal to minus 1 because between minus 1 and 1, x is not defined. Similarly, for sec x and cot x. Let's prove one at least one of these. So, let me prove this. So, to prove this, what we can do is I am assume that cosec inverse x is equal to y. So assume this is correct, this RHS is a y, what I get is cosec y is equal to x or 1 by x is equal to 1 by cosec y. By 1 by x because this side I have 1 by x and 1 by cosec y is nothing but sine y. Correct or again y is equal to sine inverse of 1 by x. So if you see the LHS was y is equal to cosec inverse x and I am saying y is equal to sine inverse x. Both are equal to y. So I can equate these two and I can say that sine inverse 1 by x is equal to cosec inverse x. How can I do this? Because both this, you see here, this is equation 1 and this is equation 2, both are equal to y. So I can say that sine inverse 1 by x is equal to cos x. To remember, just you know that sine is equal to 1 by cos x, so sine inverse 1 by x is equal to cos x inverse x. Similarly, cos and tan. And also note that these properties are valid only for principal value branches. Let's take one more property. These are all. Uh, sine sine group property sine inverse minus x is equal to minus sine inverse x tan inverse minus x is equal to minus tan inverse x cosec inverse minus x is equal to minus cos inverse x please note minus is added everywhere so if, if it has minus here you get minus here it is all sine family also logically also if you see why it is like this I prove you so if you see the sine function this is my principle uh, range from here to here. This is the principal interval. So if you take any value, for example, you take uh, x is equal to 1 by 2. So if you take 1 by 2 here, somewhere here, that is pi by 6, and if I want minus 1 by 2, this guy is somewhere here, it will be minus pi by 6. Correct? If you see here, sine inverse of 1 by 2 is equal to pi by 6, you know. And sine inverse of minus 1 by 2, if you see, is nothing but minus pi by 6. If you see here, 1 by 2, you get pi by 6, minus 1 by 2, you get minus pi by 6. So if you see, since it, the center is 0, 0, center is 0, 0, the moment you take minus, minus of this, it goes to this minus. So it becomes minus. Correct. So to make it generalized, we can say that the sine inverse of minus x is nothing but minus sine inverse of x. Similarly, tan and cosec also, if you see, the interval is minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. And in all these, the center is 0, 0. So, to take a negative, you just have to add a negative statement, uh, negative there. 
So if you say sine inverse of minus x, that is this guy is nothing but minus of sine inverse of x. So let me prove also mathematically, logically using graph, you can see this how it is. Because it is center is zero zero, you have to just add a negative here. The moment you say sine uh, minus one by two, if you see this, this is nothing but minus sine one by two. Pi by six solve. Mathematically also, if you want to prove, we can prove that. So let's let's take this uh, LHS. I'm proving the first part. LHS is nothing but sine inverse of minus x. And let me assume this is y. Or what? What I get? Minus x is equal to sine y. Or I'll get x is equal to minus sine y. Correct. Minus sine y is nothing but sine of minus y. This we know, and why I am doing this because I am trying to put this negative here. And if you uh, again this you can write as minus y is equal to sine inverse of x, or you can say y is equal to minus of sine inverse of x. So if you see this, this is my uh, LHS, LHS. This is my one equation, and this is my second equation. In both equation, you see y is common, so I can merge this two equation and get this equation. Sine inverse of minus x is nothing but minus of sine inverse of, x. and hence I prove this. This is the mathematical proof, but logically, if you want to keep this in your mind, why it is like this? If you see, it, the center is zero zero because this whole uh, interval, the center is zero zero. If you take one by two here. If you take minus one by two here, so this comes pi by six. This comes minus pi by six. Similarly, for other values also, if you see, uh, take one by root two. If you take this becomes pi by four minus one by root two. This becomes minus pi by four. Similarly, for other values, that is how it is. So for sine, tan, or cosec, which are all sine family. Please note all sine family. Sine of sine inverse of minus x is nothing but minus of sine inverse. Now let's do the same thing for cos family. This is cos family. Please note here instead of minus is pi minus cos inverse x. That is cos inverse minus x is nothing but pi minus cos inverse x. Similarly, sec inverse minus x is nothing but pi minus sec inverse x, and cot inverse minus x is nothing but pi minus cot inverse x. And these values are defined as per function because for cos. It is minus one to one. Sec is any number, but not minus one to one. And cot is any real number. Logically, also if you see this, this is my y is equal to cos inverse x graph. Here, if you see, this is my uh, interval, uh, the principal interval. And here, if you note the end, the center is not zero zero. The center is actually pi by two. Now, let's take one value. For example, if you take uh, here also, let's take one by two. So if you take one by two, it it meets somewhere here. And if you take minus one by two, this guy minus one by two. Suppose it meets somewhere here. Correct. So you want to find sine of minus one by two or the cos of cos of minus one by two. Then that, if you see this value, is nothing but pi minus cos of one by two. You see this. This value is nothing but From pi whole pi, you subtract this much, so you get this value. So in this case, since the center is not zero zero, center is pi by two, so you don't get minus simple minus here. You get pi minus. Similarly for sec and cot. Just try to understand logically also, since in this case, for the principal uh, interval, the center is not zero zero, center is pi by two. So you have to say pi minus. For example. This cos one by two is nothing but cos minus one by two is nothing. It's all inverse. Pi by three. Correct. And this is nothing but pi minus pi by three. That is two pi by three. Two pi by three. So if you see two pi by this is two pi by three is nothing but this is pi by three. This is pi minus pi by three. Correct. Cos inverse minus one by two is two pi by three, and that is nothing but pi minus pi by three. This guy is right here. Pi by three. This is two pi. 
So that's how it is. So the center is not 0, 0. Instead of minus, it is pi minus. So for cos, sec and cot, all are cos family because sec is 1 by cos and cot is cos by uh, sine. And for all these three, the center is not 0, 0. Center is pi by 2 for principal uh, interval. And that's why it is pi minus cos inverses. Mathematically, let's prove this. So I'll prove the first part. So the LHS I have is uh, cos inverse minus x. Here also, I'll assume this to be y. So I'll get minus x as nothing but cos of y. Or I'll get x as nothing but minus cos y. Now if you see minus cos y is nothing but cos of pi minus y. Please note, minus cos y is nothing but cos of pi minus y. Minus cos y is not cos y. Minus cos y is cos of pi minus y. Now, we get pi minus y is equal to cos inverse of x. Or you get y is nothing but pi minus cos inverse x. So, if you see this is equation has y, this equation has y. I'll merge these two equations using the y part. So I'll get cos inverse minus x is nothing but pi minus cos inverse x. And that is why. Logically, you also need to see since the center was not 0, 0, it is pi minus cos inverse x. Sim similar rule applies for sec and cos inverse. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to Watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.